All right. Now, if we look back up here at the top, there's this little white dot that is the kind of where the player is actually, wh who's leaving behind these walls. So now we need those player objects. So I need to save this into my sprites folder. Same sort of settings for the import. There's those. So now we're going to put them into the game itself. So we're going to have two of these, one of which is going to be the cyan player and one of which is going to be the pink player. So let me go ahead and drag one in. And there's a particular position I'm going to place it at. So I'm going to place it at 300 zero, zero for its position. So I'm going to erase this and put in 300. Zero, zero. And that will actually place it at a particular point within my game world. It's three pixels just to the right of the origin of the world. Now the other thing I need to do is make sure that the player object isn't drawn behind anything. So just like the grid, I want to be drawn below everything. The player needs to be on top of any of the walls, any of the pink or cyan walls. So I'm going to change this order in the layer in the sprite renderer to be positive. The more positive it, it is, the closer to your eye it is. So now this is going to draw on top of everything else. This thing is going to have some physics as well, so it has to be able to deal with collisions and it's got to be able to move around. That means that if it's going to collide, we need this box collider 2D. And if it's going to have any sort of physics, like moving around, such as having velocities, it's going to need this rigid body 2D. So let's start with this box collider 2D. Got a box collider 2D. This is going to be a trigger, so when I collide with something, it'll let me know that I need to have a collider event. The next thing that I need to do is have a physics 2D rigid body 2D, and that's going to have my velocity inside of it. Add a component, physics 2D, rigid body 2D. So I don't want any gravity on it, but I want to have a mass of one, and those seem like reasonable ways to start. Set my gravity to zero and start with those. The other thing we're going to want to do is to keep the fixed angle set so that we don't have the player itself rotate. Which is basically to freeze the Z position here. because we don't want the dot itself to kind of rotate in place. All right, it is time to deal with some of the scripting we're going to need to do. So we're going to have to have some movement. We're going to have to be able to alter the velocity property whenever we give it some sort of input. So we're going to add a new script called move, which is going to go onto this particular object, the player object. So the player is still selected, add a component, New script is at the bottom, and I'm going to call this move. So right now it's in the default area of my folder. I'm probably going to have multiple scripts, so I'm going to create a folder for my scripts and drag the move into there. So now let's open this guy up. So we get our default stuff, which we might end up needing later on, but the key thing that we need right now is to set up variables that keep track of what our up, down, left, and right are. So when we 
press the up key, that's going to be the up arrow for one player, and it's going to be W for the other. So we're going to set these as codes that we can then change depending on which player we are. So we need to do public key code and then have variable names for each of these. This is something built into Unity. These are names that are made up. So up here, public key code, capital C and K, up key, down key, public key code, left key, and public key code, right key. I guess I'll switch these so they match the tutorial. There we go. So now if we go back to Unity, we'll actually see these once we've saved our code. Don't forget to save when you're in Visual Studios or else it won't transfer over to Unity. So now if we go look at the player in Unity, now we have these different variables that we can set. So for us, we're going to want to make sure that we set each of these arrow keys for our player. We're dealing with the one that's on the right side, which will be the arrow keys for that player. When we get to the second player that's on the left side, we'll change those for that player to use W, A, S, and D. So over here, look at all these keys. I need to find up. There they are. Up arrow. Down arrow. Right arrow. And left arrow. Once I have those things set, then I'm going to change my update function to do something for each of these different keys. The basic idea is that every time that Unity checks, every time it does a redraw, I need to check to see if the player pressed any of the keys. So we're going to say, hey, did you press the up key? If you did, we're going to do something here. Otherwise, if you press the down key, do something here, so on. So this is the basics of what we're going to do. So we're going to be check for a key press. If input dot get key down for the up key, I'm going to do something. Next, I need to check the other keys. So, input dot get key down for the down key. And so on. For the right key. And finally, Get key down for the left key. Now I could have just put an else statement for this final one, assuming that I had any other keys. But the problem with that is that when I put a second player in, it'll also catch in that else statement any other key press I might make, space, WASD, all of that. So it's better to specifically call out the particular keys you want when you're doing some sort of update. 